It is the blue Zerg player playing for Kwandong Freaks. He is our money. And his illustrious opponent in the upper left in the red. He is playing for good game and maybe even some gaming. He's a gamer. He's Dream. I'll never get over that that team name, man. I know, right? It makes good me game gaming. Gamers gaming for good. <laughs> hey, you know That's what? I love it. That sounds like a a really useful charity. So, yeah, I can get behind gamers, gamers gaming, gaming for good. For Gamers gaming. What if what was it? What if it was just like? What if they just accidentally messed it up and they were just like well gaming, like or like well <laughs> game gamers, <laughs> we're gaming well. But like, gamers good gaming or something. Yeah, it's a crazy name. I, I, it's 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 so funny to me. Every single time I I read it, it's actually just so funny to me. But yes, it is dream against Armani. We have a TVZ to start, and you'll note there's a very large lack of Protoss, which is uh, always very fun. So I will be having about as much insightful commentary into this match as um, not a <laughs> actual Grandmaster League player, but that's okay. We're going to do our best. It's we'll all best. good. I mean, we got interesting things here to start. Look at this. It's a double gas opener from Dream. He's going to go for some tech early on. He's trying to make his opponent a little bit sad in this game number one. We're going to have to see what he wants to go for, but double gas is not the standard there, Mr. Gemini. I can tell you that much. Yeah, I was looking at that. I was a little confused. It definitely did look a little a little strange. I like that factory also just like right in the wall, too. It's also kind of weird looking to me. I don't feel like I see that every day. Uh, it's going to be a reactor. Do you think it's going to be like one of those like blue flame hellion things or it's like a proxy factory even i think i think i feel like it's too late to do the proxy factory but i feel like lately i've seen a couple of those weird blue flame hellion builds and then going into mech and stuff like that lately no it's gonna be a two on one setup actually nice. interestingly enough but a very odd one because again double gas here does power tech early and we do see the quick factory even before the reactor going down um i mean this might just be a really I mean, I was gonna say it might maybe just a quick stim timing, but not super quick because this is reactor first. Uh, it looks like we had some lag there, but there's starboard on the way. Yeah, this is. I think this is just heavy, like two on one aggression, just from a different way of getting there. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not a. Uh, of course, I'm not an expert on the two on one, but exactly how it works. All I know is that eventually, you get two barracks, you get a factory, you get a starboard. That's what two one one means for anyone that's that new, um, and is unaware, but. There's definitely multiple ways that you can get there over time. There's been a lot of different ways that you you go into it. It originated as this, you know, uh, five minute double medevac stim uh, push on the map. And obviously it's now evolved into many different things. We got two different Hellions uh, being made now. We've got the, the medevac coming out. Even a, even a tech lab is on the starport, I think. No, that's what must be on the, it must be on the barracks because it's going right for stim. Um, so yeah, that's a, yeah, that's for stim of course there because there's a medevac being made. <laughs> I don't even like remember how this game works apparently. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll see what exactly type the, what type of aggression he's going to be coming out with. The uh, dream is obviously you're going to try to do some sort of early poking against Zerg when you are Terran to try and keep the creep back as much as possible. That's always probably the most important thing uh, to deny as much vision and map presence so that later drops and later harassment can pick apart whatever the, the Zerg is trying to do so. We'll, we'll see what he can do with this. Uh, Armani's going for actually defensive Roach Warren, which also is a little bit different, I feel. Not going for the normal uh, double Evo 1-1 one, one, uh, Ling Bane style. He's going to be going into the Roaches in this game. Yeah, you know, I don't hate it, though. Against a 2-1-1, one, one, if you get, like, 10, 12 Roaches, something like that, you will be mostly fine. But we're starting to see Dream's idea in this game really come into waking just a little bit more. Uh, by getting that quick double gas, what it means is he was able to get this medevac out here with eight marines in a medevac. Again, the, the medevac is where the early gas went while still hitting an, a, an, a roughly conventional two-on-one time. He's going to hit a little bit later. But even still, with having this early drop on, he can put pressure on, he can force units out early. 
And one of the benefits for the Zerg about a two and one is you can drone uh, for quite a while because there's no map pressure. You don't have to worry about Hellions running in something like that. Uh, so this is harder to scout because two Hellions are on the map. And B, having that early drop pressure means that Armani's uh, economy is not going to be quite as developed as it might otherwise be. But there we go. Second drop coming on out. It's got a tank in here as well. And this is shaping up to be a kind of scary push coming out from the Good Game Gaming Terran. We're going to have to see what works out for him. And he hasn't done too much to remove this creep, but even still, uh, yeah, here comes the nightmare, I guess. We'll see if Romani can actually have enough. He's seemed to have sniffed this out enough to the point where he was making a big round of rotation to break the is hitting. So at least those will be popping out. The tank's going to be obviously a very annoying part of this. There's no combat shield. There's no plus one with this. Uh, it's not quite lined up with plus one right just yet, so that is not quite going to be coming into play here. There's a lot of queens already over here, but it looks like they were kind of trans... It looks like they were uh, spreading creep quite a bit, so I don't think they actually have that much energy to transfuse too many of them. Uh, again, remember, this is old patch, so as long, even if they are off creep, they will be able to transfuse. Just remember that. Uh, stimming in now is that bio. Going to go try into that main... Or into that middle line. Even going to go against the queen. And again, there's not too much transfuse energy, so not really uh, able to save too much there. And uh, Dream gets, you know, a pretty decent pick and then just kind of walks right back over to where his tank is. So not the most committed pressure, but it is pressure nonetheless, and it is forcing an equal drone count uh, from the Zerg player. So that's going to make it very difficult for uh, Amani if it does go much, much later. It's going to have to try and keep it so that way he can uh, actually get a big, bigger drone count, which he actually just did. Looks like he just did that huge drone swell. So he's got to be able to keep that. And yeah, that he does. Losing all these queens early is kind of a problem. It means that you just, really the big deal is you don't have that anti-air. You can't knock the medivacs down. You can't put a timer on this push. But for now, again, Dream runs forward. He runs back. He really has not lost that many Marines. And this marauding group of five on the left side as well, it was deflected once. Uh, but it's doing a great job of, again, of curtailing the creep sprint, of delaying the fourth phase. But now Armani says, okay, this is my time. Maybe you're distracted, Dream. The vials will land. One medivac goes down too. And finally... The pressure is cleared, Gemini. At, along with plus one on Carabas being done, so Armani, maybe he's got a pressure he timing here. Maybe he can run across the map, make something happen, but his plus one's not done, so he might just use this to defend his fourth base because that is now finally getting up. The Zerg, a little bit happier of a space now. Yeah, it would have been really tough to, to go across the map there because there were like three tanks that were out. Uh, for Dream as well right there, so attacking into that would have been quite tough, and he's going straight up into the, uh, into Hive, even, is, is our mind. He's got his infestation pit done, he's going into Hydras, so I'm assuming we're going to be trying to go straight into to Hydra Lurker, uh, or, sorry, Lurker Viper into, out, out of this as well, to get the upgrades going, and then to get some, some Vipers going for blinding clouds and stuff like that, um, so we'll see if he can get up to that quickly enough. Dream obviously is going to be continuing to put the pressure on, even after he did get dissuaded a little bit there. Going to be getting different drops going off on different sides of the map here. First one going down onto the bottom side on this fourth phase. It is just now uh, spawned, but at the same time, it's happening up on the top side as well. So, I mean, Armani is really getting himself split up this whole entire game, it seems like, as now this fourth base is just going to get completely smacked after barely even having any drones in my map on it. Uh, yeah. The entire time it was a luck. And that's the second time this has happened as well with that fourth base getting denied. That's one of the issues with Roach play, to be totally honest. You go and you want to do something, but Roaches are not fast. They're not really maneuverable. I, yeah, having them on creep, having them with Roach speed is nice, but uh, it requires much more of a commitment to make sure that you can defend and you do have to rotate them around. They're a composition that really builds themselves towards being kind of this death ball strat. So if you are Armani, you do need to make sure they don't suffer from what Dream is doing. But Lurker Warren is on the, or Lurker Den is on the way. Hydra's on the way as well. Tutu, all that fun stuff. We will eventually get into that tech that Armani is effectively just trying to turtle towards. He's kind of okay being on equal basis with his opponent in this style that he's going for because it will trade so cost effectively when the timing is reached. So now five lurkers are on the way, but Dream looking to stim in once again. Fourth base again under fire. Zerglings are going to react, but like, who really cares? They only have carapace. They don't really attack anything just yet. So this is going to be, again, a dead fourth base. Dream just does not allow Armani to keep this up. Is that another one? Three, was that three cancels in a row? Uh, yeah. I counted right there? Jesus Christ. Oh, a kill, no, there's a kill in there as well. Was there really? Well, not in 
this cycle, but in, over the course of the no, game. No, no, like literally right then, I think it was like three cancels. It was either two or three cancels. Like he got a he got another one right at the end. There was crazy. So this uh, this fourth base is beyond delayed. Dream is literally going to have his fourth base up and done and landed by the time that Armani ever oh, gets his up. Oh my position. god, full position lurkers. Oh my god, what a position for this to happen. And it's going to get leashed, unleashed on all the tanks. <laughs> they get killed really freaking fast. The bio is able to kind of get through them though. And the stim does be able to, it, with, the, with the scan, is also able to keep, uh, kind of kill them really quickly. There was no other Roach Ravager close enough to fully engulf that. So it wasn't able to fully capitalize, but... Gosh, that was definitely a way to try to swing this game if that if here on my my good. Yeah, but uh Jim and I, I'm not really sure how much it matters though. The Vipers are not in this fight, and there we have it. GG Dream. He takes game one. I'm actually I actually hate spicy food. Hilariously enough, me living in Korea is a white person that does not like spicy food, so yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate in that regard, but is the uh is the by the way we, we just got to talk about this for a second this is a gas pool coming out of armani here with a gas can so it's going extremely aggressive in this early game um so we're gonna does he think see. that dream's two raxing by the way do you think this is him blind countering dream um, trying to rax and then dream is going cc first is this just the biggest mind game is it, dream just the greatest gamer so the interesting thing here, it technically CC first is good against like a 15 to 16 pool because the command center is done by the time the Zerg is run across the map and you're like, well, you your economy is kind of in the dumps and I have two command centers, even if it's on the high ground for a second. Uh, but because this is pool, this was uh, guess first here. This is not a blind counter against the two racks. A blind counter against two racks is again that 15, 16 pool. This is committed aggression. This is very early speed. This is speed that's done right around that three minute mark. So Armani is going to look to run in, cause some damage, and then have that second bit of timing where he just has lots of Zerglings in the natural. Uh, we're going to have to see how well that works out for him, but first blush. Well, okay, we're going to have to see. Uh, he, he, The supply depot should be on the way by the time the Zerglings do arrive. And there we go. Command Center is done as the Zerglings do arrive ex as expected. And then there's that factory opener once again. That, I mean, that's a lot of HP that we have in the wall right now. Yeah, so it's going to definitely take a while. It would be really unlucky if that SCV does decide to suicide itself on the other side of the, the wall there. But I'm not seeing a world where these Lings get into the main base right now, obviously. The, the OC on the, on the Nat is going to be able to finish, and if need be, it can just lift. Uh, the Marines are pretty safe up on the high ground. The bunker is just being put down because he's not exactly sure what is going to be coming after this, if this is a follow-up Baneling or Roach Ravager all in or something like that. So he's gonna oh he does actually cancel the bunker as well okay so never mind he feels very safe to to, to keep along with this he's not really believing that it will be a, a follow-up all in uh maybe reading or knowing that this is happening but behind it he's also going for that second factory so maybe this is that blue flame hellion stuff i was talking about last game perhaps he might be trying to fiddle with that because i don't know what else you would ever possibly be doing with two factories in a tvz opener this fast uh really quick drilling clause is that a thing? No. Okay, okay. You said it with actual, like, it didn't sound sarcastic, and I was actually about to lose my mind. Like, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Well, hey, Zerglings are going to run in now, and they actually they could have killed two SCVs, but instead they're going to try to knock this Hellion down, which I don't really hate if they kill it off. That means technically much more damage, but also these Zerglings are very, very low. Marine pops out. SCVs, they're pulled off the line a little bit, but again, not that big of a deal. And there we go. Yeah, this will be the Blue Flame tech. Coming out from Dream. Shout out to Ryung. He showed us this. It didn't work, but he showed us this. The idea of it <laughs> in uh, Katowice. And poor Ryung. He didn't really get a good idea of how good his TVZ was because every single Zerg he played just happened to be like top two Zerg in the world. <laughs> it's like, hey, have fun. Play, uh, play Rogue and play Serral. There we go. It's a good way to see how good your TVZ is, right? I mean, he did take a game off the road. He did. The most cheeky build you've ever seen in your life. That was a beautiful two racks. I was kind of disgusted. Just literally everything in the back of the net of Rogue, and Rogue just didn't realize it was there until his hatchery finished. He's like, well, alrighty then. I guess that's how the cookie do crumble. So, oh, Stim also really fast after. Is that normal timing? I mean, I can't tell really you what this fast. 
I can't tell you what the stim timing is off of Blue Flame Hellion because it's just not something that we see all that much, but... Yeah, I mean, that. I usually feel like I saw this going to, like, mech or something like that, but uh, that sim timing is, like, very fast after that, so that might be a mind game. Uh, but again, we're, I'm not a Terran player, but I feel like that's a pretty cool little mind game right there. Third base is also going down really fast, but that overlord is going to be able to see it. I wonder if it did... Can you check if it saw the, the, the stim uh, being upgraded? Oh, it didn't! Oh, all right. So he might be a little confused here. He does see that it's... Well, does he actually... No, that's like one... Oh, no, he sees the one at the top right, too. Okay. So he obviously knows what it's going to be a lot of Hellions. And in they do go into the natural. The queen... Wow, actually just blocked that. That's crazy. I can't believe he actually got that block off. That was amazing. Get all, gets all the drones back into the main base for free. And now the Hellions are all trapped in the nap by all the queens. But then a couple of reinforcing Hellions do manage to catch some of those drones at the third base. So that's actually still quite good for Dream. Losing a lot of the Hellions for it, though. So in the end, I don't... How many drones did he kill? Eight. But for, what is that, eight Hellions? I still can't yeah. read the numbers. It's so blurry. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we'll try to do something different for your next game. But yeah, eight drones do go down. I did not know you can block the ramp with one queen. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to be, be enough. I thought it's like, oh, two more, two, three more. I mean, there's Hellions something you can do with like, oh, there's a little bit more there. Blue Flame Hellions, of course, doing Blue Flame things. Uh, there's something you can do where you drop a creep tumor. And that does yeah. it. But... Seeing just the single queen block because she's fatter when she's wide, when, when she's, like, <laughs> diagonal, I guess. Uh, okay, I mean, that's rather fancy, but, of course, behind this, still 10 workers, 12 workers go down. 14, actually, excuse me. And that does feel like we're starting to hit a point where it was worthwhile here for Dream, especially now as he's going to run in. But roaches are here, so at least that is gone. And again, Armani immediately, he wants to go in a hive. That's a really quick infestation pit once again. Indeed. You know what I thought that was, that's actually really funny that I just realized we never saw after having years of queen walks. We've never, no one ever made a wide queen meme. Like, you know, like the wide Putin <laughs> Oh thing. yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, I, I saw one, I've seen, someone did one for like, uh, for Brood War Zealots, for like Artosis' stream or whatever, like Zealots just walking into his main base and like killing everything. I can't believe I am now realizing we've never done a wide queen walk meme. That would well, have been so good. I can tell you, queen walks are not dead. So, yeah. we might still see it. I, we could do that. I could make that. I don't know how to do like the, the super funny meme, like the, the super funny wide edit though. I'd have to figure that out. But that would be funny. I'm just spitballing. Uh, so, yes, we're doing the very fast hive for the Lurker Viper yet again out of our mind. It's the exact same style as he was doing last game, but this time he has lost way more drones to the early pressure. Of course, uh, the Blue Flame Hellion build is really designed to do that. And now it's followed up with this very fast stim push. Not quite timed up with 1-1, one, one, but it is stim and still some Hellions and some other medevacs and all that good stuff. He's going to do as much as he can. Nice little fat couple of little mine shots on the Queen Monroe. He's going to help soften it up a little bit. But all in all, there's still quite enough here for Armani to push this back for now. But that's not really of Dream's concern. Because as long as he can put as much pressure on as possible to get as many units out as possible, uh, then he is in a very good spot. We'll see if he can cancel that fourth base a million times that we did last game. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, though. Yeah, the annoying thing here is that Widow Mines, there is no detection, in fact. Ar Armani doesn't even have some observers on the way, so uh, these two Widow Mines are going to be a little bit annoying, but there we go. Finally. Finally some overseers. Uh, that is not where those Widow Mines are there, Armani. <laughs> Watching Zerg players try to find cloaked Widow Mines on the ground, lol. XD. You need to be a Protoss player to have that happen all the time. But finally does kill them off as he does have an Overseer over. And there's another Medivac going into the natural with some Helions. And they do still have Blue Flame reports. That never goes away. So it's always a threat. They're trying to split some of the drones away in a very ill illustrated attempt. Oh, that if he could have gotten one more shot off on that little clumped up spot, that would have been nuts. But it does not. Yeah. Uh, but overall, this is a... Sit economic wise, econ economic wise, is that a word you can say? Economically. That? Economy wise? Economically? Economy -wise? Yeah, there you go. Economically, Dream is very much so in a wonderful, comfortable spot. Sitting at 
more drones than his opponent is, I'm sorry, more SCVs than his opponent's drones is usually a pretty good spot if you are a Terran player getting fourth bases set up while the Berserk barely has their fourth up. You know, Jim and I am curious. You talk about Terran having drones, uh, which of course the Zerg player can have SCVs. Um, True. In the context of, of memes and meme play and neural parasite building command centers, yada yada yada. Um, if you have, if you are a Terran player, or if you're a Zerg player, you have SCVs. I wonder if the overlay would just count all the workers as just workers, or uh, whether it would freak out. I don't know. But anyway, the army's coming on in now. Lurkers will burrow. They do have the burrow upgrade tech. They're much faster, although, again, we're on the old patch, so they burrow 0.3 seconds faster than they do on a production. But now the pilot's gonna come stimming on in. And that's a big shot. One lurker goes down, but that is still some very tasty Terran army that got spine. That was, yeah, that was, that was quite a shot. My goodness. Uh, the tank's getting pulled in as well. A couple of others as well. That's by our monitor to capitalize on that little attempted retreat from Dream. So I think Dream was really looking for a little bit more with that push. I really was, uh, it really looked like he wanted to dive in there and just kind of really snowball this. Oh, the lurkers again. Pretty and a nice shot off. Doesn't quite kill too much though, but the chase is definitely still possible here for Armani. Kills off the last tank. The uh, lanes are also actually going into the third base here for a little bit of counter come on. That's not really much. Mostly just a crack. Oh my god, there's still Hellion drops happening. That's something. Oh, look at these. Oh, we're fine. 11 minutes into the game. All right, luckily that didn't get into just total chaos right there with those four Hellions, but the ghost transition is out, as obviously there's so many Lurkers and Vipers that uh, going pure bio tank is not at all going to be keeping you into this game uh, as a dream. So we'll be finally going into that ghost count, getting as many of those up as possible, as we do know and how strong the snipe ability is against all of those Lurkers, and they are quite necessary. Yeah, uh, this game is, we're going to get uh, some Hotel California game I'm coming out rather soon where you can enter these fights, but you really can never leave. It's the Lurkers chase, the Vipers chase, and the Ghosts, they snipe everything out. Ghosts defending the fifth base are going to be fine for now. This is just bio. There's no Ghost, no tank, nothing like that. But actually, uh, yeah, this bio force should just get eaten alive here by the Zerg, I think. But the army on the right side is doing a good job of distracting things. Queens, they're staying alive for now, serving as a nice buffer. And the Lurkers should be able to burn, but one will go down, and already, again, Dream is going to get that fourth base. We talk about things dying, and eventually this army will die by the, again, exchange of a significant component of the Zerg economy. Luckily for Armani, he does have that base on the north side that's going to get taken rather soon. And Armani, for the first time, and it feels like in quite a while, he does have that supply lead once again. His At least his army, his standing army, is not terrible. And the funny thing of this game... Take a look at resources lost. Our money's lost less. Yeah, he's lost less. But I mean, as the player that's curling with with Lurker Viper, that's probably what's going to happen, I think, overall. Uh, Dream is, of course, being the one that is more aggressive and trying to you know, push the issue more, and that's generally going to lose you more, more resources, I think. So I think he, uh, Dream is not really too worried about this right now. Because he just killed off a base for a decent portion of his army, and now he's killing off another base while continuing to keep uh, the Zerg completely contained. Armani has 90 drones right now, but he doesn't actually have enough space to mine with them, while his Dream has had no harassment on his side of the map, no disruptions. This Nidus is going to try to go up in the main base, but that's going to get caught immediately before it can even get up. Dream is expanding to almost every location on his side of the map right now, while keeping Armani not even on four bases. He is sitting very pretty. Sure, Armani's army is quite large, just because it, it's, it's just because it was large earlier. The problem is that he's never going to actually accrue enough of the bank to ever get a full remax when Dream is going to be sitting super pretty on a massive economy back at home. Yeah, Dream, he's taking his fourth base, he's taking his fifth base, he's got a sixth base on the way, should he want it again, as you said. Uh, oh, sorry, sixth base is getting taken, he's got a seventh base on the way if he wanted, but now Armani looking for the break here and the lurkers are going to burrow up but ghosts they're going to run backwards they say no no, no we, don't, we don't want to do this right now but tanks staggered as they are getting some massive shots here now we're going to see the snipes go down on all the expensive units but it looks like despite all of that armani will be able to break through but now if we look at resources lost the zerg player no longer in the advantage and the big deal of course is the fact oh wait that lurker uh, that uh the knight has actually got off it looked like dream was handling things but now there are six lurkers in the main base on top of the production there of the Terran Gemini. You know what they say about Terrans and their production? Uh, 
yes, they do enjoy to keep it intact, as that is usually very important for their game plan in the future. However, the Lurkers seem like they've all got picked off by the reinforcements, and the other reinforcing Zerg units are going to be forced back into that Night of Swarm. So what looked like was going to be a pretty dominant play for Armani to hopefully swing the game into his favor after taking a decent-ish engage in the middle of the map proves to be, uh, unfortunately, not the case. His dream basically keeps his whole base intact. That Barracks is not even going to get uh, burned down right there, so very nicely handled by Dream. Again, he's still in a bit of that powering up phase. He spent a lot of his resources on expanding all of the map and getting these high-tech switches going, so his army was kind of a little bit small comparatively uh, in that little transition stage, but now that he's really getting all of these extra bases up, he's getting all these CCs done, now is when he's going to be able to start to really kind of power up really hard and get that just massive late game army that will then eventually be able to be uh, continually reinforced. His gas count is honestly staying quite low, which is kind of amazing to me. He's getting like all these other upgrades and stuff like that. So um, is he mining gas at all of his other bases? It's kind of crazy. It's not that much, but regardless, I think Dream is still thinking. I think he's still feeling pretty good in this game. Yeah, I'll give you the number that is really the only one that matters. There are 21 ghosts on the field. <laughs> that means that Armani is in a bit of a problem. A little bit of a struggle. Here's Zerglings are going to find a planetary, but, but planetary Zerglings do not really kill planetaries, even if they have Adrenal plans, because they, they don't have any attack upgrades. The Lurker, uh, the uh, Nidus will not go up in the main. These Zerglings are dead. But we're going to enter some heavy Zergling gaming here, Gemini, because... Armani only on four bases, only on... Actually, I don't even think he's on eight gas anymore. Well, okay, he is still just for a little bit longer. Um, you need more than eight gas to support heavy Lurker Viper setups. It's just, it's so gas expensive. That is how Zerg players will tend to lose this style of gaming because they've got plenty, plentiful minerals, no gas. But at the very least, Armani, he has a successful aggressive option for the first time in a while. This fifth... I want to say this fifth base. This seventh base will go down. Oh, there we go. Snipes going on and everything. Ronnie's just looking for the YOLO move on in into tanks, into ghosts, into everything else. And the blinding clouds are going to be nice, but uh, unfortunately here for Armani, um, Snipes, they are not in fact uh, attacks. They're spells. They go through blinding clouds just the same as the ghosts. Looking for some big positioning here on the concave, and this is just absolutely not working out for Armani. He, even if he wins this fight, which he won't, he's just lost too damn much. So now we're going to see the Lurkers go down. They're all dead in the supply, massively in favor of the Terran now. That was, I don't even, it's not going to show us, but that was insanely expensive for the Zerg. Yeah, and if you just look at the numbers on the bottom, it really t tells everything at the end of that fight where Dream was sitting with a solid bank of all of his resources and he wasn't even maxed out yet where Armani was literally not even at 150 supply and was like dead broke. So that's what we're talking about with this starving economy that Armani has been sitting with for the last however long this game has been going, to be honest with you. And Green is really now being able to fully see the fruits of his efforts with this uh, continued remaxing. If a Zerg cannot get back to that full remax count after doing a trade that heavy, then they are really not long for the rest of the game. There, there's a couple more Lurkers getting morphed in here, trying to get just whatever they can. The thing with Lurker Viper is that it is very good defensively. It is very hard to break through it if you can just kind of sit and hunker down as much as possible. It is very difficult to kind of break through it, but Terran does have the tools very well to do so. Snipes, of course, are extremely good at getting rid of those Lurkers from, uh, from afar, so... We are now seeing the, the complete uh, control of Dream here on both sides of the map, really just pushing in every single angle. And Armani, the only way he can possibly push this back is to have everything together on one side, and he's choosing to do that onto the right. And we'll be able to dislodge some of this for now, but that ghost count is just absolutely massive, and that is going to result in Dream with a pretty solid 2-0 to zero win in the series.